Hello all, welcome back to another video and welcome to Sammy G's World of Cinema. Today on the channel I am going to be doing part four of my BFI collection and I think as it stands, ladies and gents, I think this might be my fourth and final instalment of my BFI Blu-ray collection series. Um, yeah, I thought I had a lot more and I, I thought that maybe there might be a couple more parts after this but no I think as it, it as as it stands it's going to be the fourth and final installment of this BFI collection series now this won't be the last time though I'll, I'll be um buying or collecting from BFI because there's a lot more titles um that I do want to pick up from them um yeah there's definitely couple more that I definitely want to get like when the wind um blows and um there's another title is it called Fanny and Alexander that film that's meant to be really good and um oh what's the other one Roy recommended me a couple of um other titles the other day like um Roy if you're watching this um I'm gonna kind of need your hand here because um yeah he recommended some really good titles and I'm forgetting what they're called um oh he did recommend me one with uh, judgment in something that title that I need to pick up um um at some point so yeah um so without further ado, we're going to go straight off the bat. And the first one I'm showing is, which my second sight Blu-ray copy of this, I have now retired. And I have sent that Blu-ray copy over to Roy at Blue Roy Movies. I will leave a link to Roy's uh, channel down below because he absolutely um, deserves um, like all the love he can get with, with like his YouTube content and stuff. He's a fantastic guy in the in the film community and I've got a lot and lot of time for that guy and um, so yeah a um, wonderful chap is Roy I'll um send um I'll put the link to his channel in the description box down below and yeah go and give him some love support guys because he totally deserves it and that's um first one I've got is Gregory's Girl which yep yeah, I picked up on 4k and yep yeah, I am really really looking forward to checking this out um, Gregory's Girl, absolutely love it. Great film from um, Bill Forsyth. My favourite Bill Forsyth film. And I'm just trying to get this open now. Yeah, I got this in a um, buy one, get one free deal. Um, it was like a summer deal in, in HMV. I got, um, I'll show it in a like future video, but I did pick up Jaws 2 on 4K and I got this. So, you know, like two... For the price of one, really couldn't grumble at that, so very nice. Love this film. Great film, great soundtrack as well. Has this got any... No reversible artwork, this one, but you've got the disc. And I think you've got, yeah, you've got like nice um, booklets, this one. I know when um, Pete's played Tendo Guy, watched this one recently as well. Um, I think he either watched it recently or he did pick it up. Um, this edition as well um but yeah that's the original um quad poster there guys excellent film i love the um main guy in it he's he's got a very witty personality really good um and yeah the uh, the, the the girl in it um played by d hepburn oof wow absolutely stunning yeah really yeah, D. Hepburn, really, really nice on the eye. And of course, you've got Claire Krogan in there from Altered Images. And some of the other actors, I think, from Bill Forsyth's first film, that Sinking Feeling, which is a film I do really, really like. So, yeah, that is Gregory's Girl on 4K. Looking forward to watching that one soon on 4k and then massive shout out to Stuart, Stuart George because I know Stuart is a big fan of the I think the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers um, but he still loves the original version I've only seen the original version but I've got the remake on Arrow Blu-ray 
and that's Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. So yeah, really good um, movie. Doesn't come with the booklet, unfortunately, but still really good sci-fi gem there. And it's got, um, I would love to get the VHS tape of this as well for that, some iconic artwork as well. And um, this was directed by Don Siegel, probably most notable for Dirty Harry. So yeah, that's Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And then a good film, um, you know, this was a, this was a good film and, um, you know, it was quite sad what um happened to the like the yeah this main guy in it and then i think um yeah like um i think he he got uh, accused of something um and then yeah and i think he is loses his job doesn't he from what i remembered and yeah um, it's um yeah and then he's trying to like like um get back on his feet this like this teacher and that's the film called shoot the messenger a BBC, yeah, I think a BBC um, TV film, which I thought was, it was a good film and um, probably a one-time watch for me, but I did think it was a, a good watch. Um, the main actor did a brilliant job in it. Um, he was really good in it. And yeah, this aired back on um, 2006. So yeah, really good, good film. I think this was set like Christmas time as well, from what I remembered. Around the Christmas periods, this film. Yeah. So um I good good film that um shoot the messenger. Um and then a film I've not seen as of yet. Um I think just because with the subject matter and it it, it does look sound really bleak but it is Denis Villeneuve's first ever film and I think I got it for that reason because I am yet to check out the other films that I've not seen from Denis Villeneuve I think there's one other one called Enemy um with Jake Gyllenhaal and um Doom Part 1 I need to re-watch again because I was absolutely exhausted when I watch it and I know Doom Part 2 has been getting a lot of love this year as well so I might have to try watch both of them movies before the year is up so this is his first film Pol Polytechnique and yeah this sounds like it's going to be a, a real really difficult watch guys um yeah so um it's um it's a film that I definitely will watch at some point, but it's, um, yeah, it's one I'm going to have to be in the right moods in. And yeah, black and white film as well. Just some stills there, guys. Yeah, set in, I think, is it Canada? I think it's set in this film. Is it Canada, this film? Um, oh, is it French? Oh, yeah, no, Canada. Set in Canada, this film. So, yeah, that is Polytechnique. And then... Um, yeah, a film I thought was really good and um, very interesting and very different to like what I've seen in a canny while um, before I saw this film. And um, yeah, it's got a very chilling aspect about it that really, really um, bangs the drum, really tampers on the um, sort of like getaway for um, like Tilda Swinton's character. 
and her mother in this film. And, um, you know, this film has got a real sense of fear and paranoia, you know, that really um, sets a foot about it. And um, I, I think, is it about an author, isn't it, that stays at like this, it's like this cottage in it, no, this hotel. I think is it in, in Wales, I, I can't remember now. And then, um, yeah, like um, when she, she's kind of like writing um, this, um, it, it's it's like this memoir or this um, like essay or something. And then like she gets these like visions and these memories keep flooding back. Um, but yeah, that's the film, The Eternal Daughter. Good film. I did change it to the reversible artwork for this one because I did prefer that, um, that artwork there. So um I am up. Oh, there we go. Booklet for, fell out there. And good film to possibly watch at like the winter period as well. I did really like him. There was one character in there. I think he was um what's he call it? Like a, I think he was he was like one of the night staff at this hotel and, and he was yeah, he was a really good character. I did like his character in there and um Till Swinton also plays the mother in there as well I think it was this guy who was a good character in there as well like that guy there So um, I that is the Eternal Daughter, and I'll, I'll just show like the original um, BFI artwork for that that one, and that's that one. I think I can remember who was it. Um, Davy Davy's flicks. I remember him speaking really highly of this film. If I can find a link to Davy's channel, I'll leave a link to Davy's channel down below. Fantastic guy. I've got volume one of um, Ghost Stories for Christmas. I think I did get this one like last year. Um, I need to get volume two. I might get that um, this year as well because um, I think I got this last year, but I haven't got volume two as of yet. But that's Ghost Stories. For Christmas, you've got all these, like, short ghost tales that was aired at, like, Christmas time. Because, you know, like, um, the original Woman in Black from 1989, the, the TV adaptation, that aired on, like, um, Christmas Eve. So, um, the ones, I think, I, have I seen all four of these? I think I might have done Whistle, and I'll come to you. The Stalls of... Barchester, A Warning to the cur Curious and Lost Hearts. I think I have seen all four of those. Maybe I think I have. In a, like a anime, anime case there as well. So, yeah, um, I think... Whistle I'll come to you. I think that might have been my favourite, but I'll I'll need to again. I will need to go back and refresh my memories on refresh my memory on these um short films, guys. Um I can remember them being really good though, a couple of them, but I um I don't really remember much about them either. So I need to um go and refresh my memory on these. I think a warning to the curious. Uh, I don't know if I was that keen on that one, to be honest, from what I remembered. I think that was the one I wasn't all that bothered about. What's that? What's that? Is that? Yeah, John Hurt's in, in that one. Um, it's like John Hurt there. Don't know if it's. Don't know if that's John Hurt in it. Does look a lot like him there. Um, and then we have so whistle, and I'll come to you. Oh, I see. So you've got the nineteen sixty eight version and the twenty ten version. So maybe John Hurt's in that one, in that version. And then disc two, you've got the stalls of Barchester and a warning to the curious. And disc three, Lost Hearts. So nice, yeah, very nice free disc set there. And obviously, when um, the time comes, I will get in um, volume two 
of um, yeah, ghost stories for Christmas there. And wow, I am on a roll today, um, ladies and gents. Um, I've got five titles to go. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Um, so I guess the remaining part of this video, um, part four of this, is all Uzu, Uzu um, related. Um, who's a fantastic director. There's still a couple more of these uh, titles, you know, like I think there's about three or titles or something on the BFI label. Um, excuse me, guys, that I need to um, like pick up um, and add to the um, Blu-ray collection at some point. Because I think they did, um, because there, there was like three films um, into like one set um, from like Ozu, which I wouldn't mind getting because I've not seen any of those three films and a couple of the titles on like this um, flip disc sort of version as well. So um, yeah, the first one I have got to show is um, Early Summer. That was a oh, beautiful film. You've got um, the um, another film on there called What Did the Lady Forget? I don't think I've seen many of these bonus films on like um, these um, flip disc versions. And... Uh, Bollocks, that's damaged a little bit, that jewel case in there. And then you've got the bonus film on DVD, What Did the Lady Forget? And then we'll have a look at the booklet. Someone somewhere in summertime. Da -da -da -da. Someone somewhere, someone somewhere. In summertime. That's from Simple Minds. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun. And I'll say it's all right. So, yeah. Um, I do need to... Um, see the bonus film in there but early summer i can remember that being really good um a few of ozu's films have a very similar resemblance about them and kind of very similar in tone and um, being a couple of years since i last watched that one so i will need to possibly even next summer now i'll go and refresh um, my memory on that one um so um this one i don't actually think i've seen it's got um one of ozu's very early films, A Mother Should Be Loved. And this film's called um, Late Autumn. So, yeah, I'll need to go and refresh my memory on that one. I'm sorry, I need to... No, sorry, I, don't, I haven't seen the film. I'll need to go and um, watch it at some point. Um, camera is um, behaving itself today, guys. It's picking up quite well. Um, today on like when I'm showing these titles and um, like um, these um, booklets as well but I might need to get like a ring light at some point um, just to make my um, like the, the picture quality in these videos a little bit pin sharper and stuff um, yeah I'll have to look into something like that So, yep, um, and then we have the Blu-ray for Late Autumn and the DVD for um, Another Mother Should Be Loved. So, yeah, definitely need to, um, I need to give that one a watch at some point. This film was shown at Tyneside Cinema last year and I didn't get round to watching this one at the cinema, unfortunately. But I remember this being really good. Um, you know about um, I. It's it's a kind of like the relationship between this girl and her father, and um, I think there's that I there's been about it's like I think the the question yeah so like a, some relative is sort of um, interfering with with them and it's involving around like um, sort of I think is it the um, so like her niece. And the and the father in it, like his daughter, 
is um you know like um i think arranged to like be married and and stuff and um she's trying to get um have a good um you know like well discussed discussed conversation about like future marriage and stuff and um yeah it's it's really good um and this was ozu's of ozu's first sound film is on here called the only son um Oh, was there a song called The Only Son? I think there was, actually. I'm trying to remember who did that song again. I'm going to have to, um, yeah, do some research on that one. But, yeah, um, I think The Only Son, actually, is the, the bonus film I've seen in, in here. And, yeah, the film is um, Late Spring, which was really fantastic. Um, I think the main actress, she's been in a few of Ozu's films, and she did a marvellous job. I really did like the dad in it, and her dad in it, you know, was very quirky at times. A bit offbeat as well. I think there was times where he would be going to, like, the, the bar and stuff, and he would be chatting to, like, a couple, maybe his work colleagues or people at, at the bar and stuff. Yeah, um... So, yeah, I, I definitely... Again, I do need to refresh my memory on this one, guys, because it has been a couple of years since I, I last watched it and stuff. So, so yeah, that, so yeah, that is Late Spring, really good film. Um, this might be my least favourite Ozu film out of the Ozu films I've seen. However, I, I, did I like it? I, yeah, I think I did actually. I thought it was quite good. I think it did um, involve around like politics, this one and stuff. And there was some like political themes in here, which um, yeah, there was um, it was there was some interesting aspects in this film as well. But um, yeah, I don't really remember too much about it. An autumn afternoon again, one I might need to go back and hopefully change my opinion on. But I did um, I did like it, but prob probably out of um, Ozu's filmography, out of the ones I've seen, I think this might be my least favourite, but still a decent movie. And you've got the um, film on here called A Head in the Wind, um, which is the bonus film on here, which I haven't seen as of yet. And was this Ozu's last film? Yeah, it was his final film as well, An Autumn Afternoon. So, uh, and you've got, oh, you've got, um, like, the original quad poster in there as well. So, yeah, that is an autumn afternoon. And the last one, the last one, guys. Um, and I am recording this in the afternoon, so I can't say, like, good morning now. I could say good afternoon. And it nearly is an autumn afternoon. Not not too far from it. And this I've seen twice. And I think it might be my second favourite Ozu film after Tokyo Story. And that is um, Good Morning. Which is a really great um, film. Um, I love this. Absolutely love this. It has got a Criterion US release. And these two kids, like these two brothers, are, um, you know, like um, begging... Um, for a TV set um, in like their own in their like living room and stuff, and their mother keeps refusing to get them a new te television set, so they have to keep going to like their neighbor's house in order to watch TV and stuff. And um, there was another good like um, side story to this one as well. I think there was there was times where um, a couple of the um, kids in it they would be. Um, 
like going through a vow of silence until they get a new TV set. They just do everything they can in order to get um, a TV set. And I think this is kind of one of Ozu's um, sort of light-hearted comedy sort of movies. And yeah, I really did like it. And there was a good side story in this one. Was it um, The Neighbour and the, the Washing Machine or something? I did like that side story. Um, yeah, it was a... Good movie. No, really good movie. Again, Roy, if you haven't seen this one, buddy, I would highly, highly recommend it, my friend. And that goes for Warren as well at Goose's Movies. Um, I'm sure Warren might have seen this, but I can't remember. But yeah, Warren, if you haven't seen it, um, I definitely would highly recommend it. It's that, that song, isn't it? Good morning, Baltimore. Du, 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 du. <laughs> and then there's um what is it um oh there's a Beatles song good morning good morning but I'm singing this in in like the the afternoon as which you know it just it, I need to be replacing that with good afternoon instead but anyways we digress. So, yeah, and that's it. And then you've got the bonus film on here on the second disc, which is on DVD. I was born, but yeah, and that's on DVD and I've not, I've not seen that one as of yet. So, yeah, that's Good Morning, fantastic film from Ozu. And there we go, guys. That concludes part four and the final part of this BFI blu-ray collection series as i said guys this will not be the last time i will be picking up anything from bfi because there's a lot more bfi titles i want to get um especially when the next sale the next bfi sale comes around i'll definitely be looking out for more titles to add to the collection and of course i will be showcasing them on the channel i don't know I think the next label I will showcase next. And my um I think my next collection series I might showcase Radiance Films. Yeah, Radiance Films might be my next um like um what is it? Um like um boutique label. There we go. Um, boutique label to um like um showcase the titles i've got part of like um like their range and they're such an underrated label as well they've done some fantastic titles so i think radiance films yeah is going to be the next um like boutique um label i will focus on for like um part of this collection series so guys i hope you're all um having a wonderful weekend and um yep um i just want to take the time as well guys to say thank you so much for all your continuous support on the channel i really really do appreciate it it means the absolute world to me you know i've been on youtube for coming up to um eight um month now and i'm absolutely loving every minute of it guys and it, it truly is fantastic to be like on youtube starting this channel it's been one of the absolute highlights of the year and, you know, I've met some incredible friends through it and, um, yeah, it's just been wonderful and um, long may it continue. So thanks for watching, cheers for stopping by and until next time, I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.